Well, since where I live, the snow has been falling really a lot in the last couple of days. And there's a lot of snow shovels being used around here, so I thought the dolls in the dollhouse might need a snow shovel too. Stay tuned and see how fun and easy this project is. All right, so here's the parts to the snow shovel that come on your pattern. We have four layers for the sides. We'll get to all what all these pieces are in a moment. Let's talk about what else you need in addition to the pattern this time. Obviously glue and paint. You're also going to need a cocktail straw, some 20 gauge wire or thereabouts, and some kind of heavy, like a construction type adhesive. I've got this Loctite Power Grab. I bought this at the Family Dollar. Um, caulking would probably work. Something that we can make this wire stay inside of this straw and stay stable. Um, our tacky glue isn't going to do that. So let me get some glue out here on my tray and let's get started putting these pieces together. So just like normal, I'm using white cardstock. This is kind of a medium weight cardstock. I prefer that for many reasons. Number one, paint colors last longer, I have found, than colored paper. The color on the paper tends to fade a lot faster. Also, it's a lot more economical. You can make a lot of miniatures out of a batch of paper, of white paper, where if you had to have different package of paper for every color, it would be a lot more expensive. Now we are going to put these three kind of funny shape pieces together. Um, these all come in, they're on the pattern. I've got them laid out here on my tray pretty much exactly as the pattern is. Uh, in the order they are. I group them together on the pattern. The pattern is both a PNG to use with your cutting file, which is what I've used here. There's also a PDF available for free download. Both are free to download um, that you can cut by hand. The, um, the link to download the patterns is in the blog post. So go over to the blog post and you can get grab those patterns. Uh, they're free for you to use. Go ahead and, you know, you make some, you can sell what you make. Just please don't pass out the patterns themselves. If your friends want to make the same project, send them over to the video, send them to the blog. Let them get their own copies and have them watch the video so they know how to do it. So there's our first part. Now we're going to glue these, these in sets of four. You'll notice these, are, these funny shaped pieces are flat on one side and curved on the other, so be sure you put them together that way. And on the pattern, I group them kind of reversed just to emphasize the point that we've got two sets of four. Now line these up really carefully so that point, point makes a nice point. I'm going to go through this. I'll only glue one set of these four and then I'll move on to the other piece that we need to glue in this first step. There's a few extra, whoops, extra steps. My fingers are already sticky and I'm just starting out. I haven't even finished my coffee this morning. I'm already full of glue. I've had a rough couple of weeks, so I'm running way behind. I'm actually filming this the day before it's going to go up. Hopefully it goes up tomorrow on time. Um, but I'm hoping to get back on schedule. All right, there, that piece is done. We'll do the same with those four, but I'll do that off camera. Now we have this small rectangle at the bottom. I'm gonna take a pair of scissors, and I'm gonna put a nice curve into it, like you would if you were curling, like curling ribbon. And now we're going to glue, put glue on the inside of the curve. Over most of it, you don't need to do the whole thing, mainly on this free this edge that will be loose. And now just roll it up into a fairly tight uh, tube. Okay. 
It doesn't need to have a very big hole in it. This is going to go over this piece of wire to form the handle. Um, the rest of these pieces, oh, actually we are going to do this piece too. We're going to take these two rectangles and do these two strips here. These I will glue on this step too. Simply because it will be easier to get have them glued together to do our next step with them. All right. Now, let's let this glue dry, and then when this is dry, I'll come back and we can go on to our next step. All right, so off camera, I did mark the center of these three pieces, and this one I marked on both sides. We're going to paint over it so we won't see it later, but it will help us with placing these pieces and also our handle later. Um, and this piece is an inch and three-fourths wide, so the center is at seven-eighths. This piece is one and a half inches wide, so the center's at three-fourths. And this one is an inch wide, so the center is at a half inch, so that you can do that. Now, <clears throat> we're going to go ahead and look at this first. I like to dry fit before I put things on permanently. And that's going to go right there. Then we're going to line this one up at the center and along this edge at the bottom. This was the part of this process, of this um, project that took me the longest to figure out was how to get those ridges that are so much a part of a snow shovel to get them and have them look right on our snow shovel. And I tried several things. Um, I've become quite familiar with snow shovels in the last couple of years since moving to the Midwestern part of the U.S. where we get a lot more snow than we ever got when I lived in Oregon. Um, and one of the fun things about snow shovels I've noticed is that they come in all kinds of bright colors. So we're going to make our snow shovel pretty, and you can make it whatever color you want. They come in black, too, but that's boring. Why make a black shovel when we can make a pretty one? <clears throat> Excuse me. <coughs> I'm not sure why I'm so congested this morning. So this needs to be in about the center. I mean, there's no... No one's going to come by and say, oh, you missed the center on that. So now we're going to put glue on the back side of this little strip. And this is going to go. Before we put this on, though, I am going to get a pencil and just kind of roll this top. I want to start the curve without that in the way. There. Now we can put this on. And make sure you haven't gotten that crooked. And now this, we're going to line up. I know it's easier to line it up before you curve it, but it's easier to curve it before you put this on, and I think that's really more important. All right, now this glue needs to set up so these won't move when we add the sides. So I'm going to let this dry, and then I'll be back, and we can go to the next step. All right, now this glue has dried enough that nothing's going to move. I'm going to put some fresh glue out on my tray and we are going to start putting our sides on. Now these are our sides. The flat side is going to go against here and we're going to put them on so they are upright. And we're going to put one, <coughs> excuse me, on each side. And I find it's best to put some glue on there and then also run some glue here. sides while I'm at it. And by having this on here for a few seconds, it's getting a little bit stickier, so it's going to help it to stand up. You want to line this up with the point at the bottom and as close to the edge as you can manage. And this will be easier when you don't have a camera that you're trying to keep your head out from in front of. Now these will need to set up so that they can dry, so that this glue can settle up, set up so that it doesn't get, these don't get moved around. After I turn the camera off, I am going to double check that I've got these on straight and got them on where I want them. And then when this glue sets up, I will be back and we can go on to the next step. 
All right, this glue has sat for about a half hour, maybe a little more, so hopefully it won't, they won't fall off. These pieces that are smaller are cut slightly smaller than this opening. Um, don't worry about getting it all the way to the edge. It doesn't need to be. This way you've got room to, to get it in there without knocking things down. So I'm laying it in there, no glue yet, and I've got a dotting tool. And I'm running my dotting tool up through these spaces. This was the part of this project that took me the longest to figure out how to do this and have it look really cool. So by pre-creasing it with this, it really does help. Now, that side that was down, I'm going to coat in glue. I'm just using a nice tacky, just regular tacky glue. I wouldn't go with a super thin glue, but something that's got a little, that's a little thick. try to get all the way to the edges and I'm also going to run some glue along these this bottom edge because I want that to really adhere down there yeah. put it back in try to get it centered back where it was as best you can and use your dotting tool again now, if you don't have a dotting tool uh, the handle of a small paintbrush would probably work really well for this. But this way we get that shape. Because snow shovels have ridges in them. Now, the other thing we're going to do is we're going to put some glue on here. And I'm really hoping that my super glue still has liquid glue in it. Yes. I'm going to put a dot of super glue on the end of this. Oops, it's a little bit stiff. There we go. I didn't use the super glue on the prototype I made yesterday, and it was really hard to get this to stay down. So I'm hoping that that super glue is going to help me a little bit. Now line these up and hold this down until it wants to stay. Hopefully, that super glue will help us to keep it down. If you don't have super glue, don't worry about it. You'll just have to hold it for a few seconds more. That's all. And yeah, because the super glue's there, it's staying. So I'm gonna put that off to the side. Now I'm going to cut this bar straw about four, uh, probably about three and a half inches long. We don't need the whole thing. That way, is that about right? Let me see. Nope, that's too long. I'm gonna cut it off about here. Let me cut it and then I'll see how long it is. Um, okay, I've cut it just about three inches. I've got wire. Now this is, let me double check um, my package of wire. This is 20 gauge stem wire. Something about this weight, we are going to paint all these pieces that we're working on now. Uh, there it is. And I'm gonna go up a few inches and I'm going to make a bend. And I'm going to make the first side bend before I put the, the piece on. All right, and we've got that, that kind of shape. Hopefully you can see that. I'll move you down a little bit. Hopefully you can see what I'm doing. I'll try to stay under camera. Now that little piece of paper that we folded, that we rolled, slide that on here. We are going to...
and get that kind of even. I kind of twist it. I found it worked better when I twisted. Use some wire cutters and use use wire cutters. Don't try to cut this with something that's not meant to cut wire because that's really dangerous. All right, now I'm going to back the camera up so that you can see what I'm doing. Now, we need to fix this so that it stays inside of our straw and doesn't twist all over. For that, I'm using this all-purpose um, construction adhesive. Um, it's, it's really inexpensive. You could use caulking. I mean, you could try using your tacky glue, but it probably won't hold the wire in the plastic. This is used to hold things like tiles on walls and used to, you know, repair home interior stuff, building construction type stuff. So it holds really well. It won't be completely um, cured by the time we're done here today, but that's okay. It will cure over the next couple of days. The prototype I made yesterday, the handle is staying right where I want it to. Kind of put a gob there on the end. Do wash it off your fingers as soon as you're done because it does dry your skin out really badly. At least it does mine. Kind of push that up. Between the fact that the wire is twisted and that construction adhesive, that will make a pretty good bond. Now I'm gonna let the I'm gonna clean my tray off, wash my hands, and let all this glue dry. And then I'll come back and we can start painting. All right, our glue has had time to start drying and we're gonna start painting now. So we're gonna take this handle and set everything else off to the side. And I've got a clamp here. That's because it's really hard to hold this if you don't have a clamp. Um, we don't need to paint the very bottom. I have some black craft paint. The paints I'm using today, as well as the Mod Podge and the brushes, were all provided by Plaid to make videos for you guys. So a big thank you to them. And we're just gonna paint this whole thing. Now, if I had multi-surface black paint, that would probably be better, but these won't get used, you know, these probably won't get handled that much. Um, try and get it on the green wire too. And off camera, I will go back and make sure I've got everything covered. And I might do a second coat. So I will tidy that up here in a minute. Get off to the side. And now for the shovel. Now we have this piece of paper and we have our shovel. We are going to paint one side of this blue. This, well actually both sides of the paper paint the top and then I'm going to pick it up and paint it at least the top and probably just the top of this because we need this to it's going to bow out and I don't want to be painting too close to my handle so I'm also going to put this in one of these handy little clamps just to hold it so it doesn't stick to my table now I'm going to take the blue paint, and you can use any color you want. I think I said earlier, snow shovels come in all kinds of pretty colors. Um, they come in black, but <clears throat> I've seen all colors of snow shovels around town. So you can pick whatever color you want, whatever you think your dolls in your dollhouse would love. So I am <clears throat> going to paint this side. I'm gonna paint this top area. I'm gonna paint inside. Um, I'll probably have to do some of this off camera just to make sure I get it coated really well. Um, <clears throat> but I'm going to paint, um, then I'm going to come back off camera and paint this side. Once this is dry so I can turn it over, I'm going to paint this area and the ends where I'm holding it onto it right now so that I have everything on this covered. That way no white will show when we glue the handle on. So I'm gonna get this finished up. I'm gonna get the paint, let the paint dry, put a second coat where it needs to be, and then I'll come back and we can start assembly. All right, my paint is almost dry, not quite, but I'm kind of running out of time here because I'm running really late this week. 
So I've, I left a spot not painted here in the middle of the back of the blade so that I could see where my line is. And I'm actually going to put some super glue here because I want this to stay. So put, that, put the lid back on so I don't stick my finger in it. And I will have to touch up the handle because I see I missed a spot. Make sure you've got your handle running the right direction. I want it so that it is parallel to the blade there. And, that. and we want to make sure it's straight up and down. And I think I'm going to give, I'm going to put a clamp on it and I'm going to give this about 10 minutes just to make sure it's nice and solid and turn the way I want it to. And in the meantime, I can touch up that paint. So when that paint, that glue sets up, I'll come back and we will add this part on. All right, our handle is now set up. So what we're going to do is take this piece. Now I painted both sides of this because we might, we'll see a little bit of it here at the top, but I can paint this now that it's after the glue dries. So we're going to coat the back of this pretty thoroughly with some tacky glue. And this is one time where I'm just going to squirt it out because I'm going to need, I want to cover the whole back. And then use my toothpick and spread it out all the way to the edges as much as possible. Yeah, we're staying under camera. I'm trying to keep you guys back up high enough that you can see everything I'm doing, but hopefully you're still seeing the detail. It's kind of hard when I'm working on a big project and I want you to see everything. Now, we are going to put this right here. And I'm going to kind of use my thumb to push this down and then clamp it. I've got the, and these little clamps are really handy. These just come from Dollar Tree. They're, you, I think there's six of them in a package for, well now it's a dollar and a quarter. Um, so they're relatively inexpensive and they're so handy for, mini, for miniature projects. All right, so hopefully I've got my handle on straight. If not, we'll just assume that this shovel's had some, a hard life. All right, I'm gonna let that glue set up and then I'll come back and we'll put on some more paint. All right, now that our glue has set up, we're gonna take our same blue paint, and I it kind of chipped my paint a little bit when I was put the clamp on there, so I'll cover that. I missed this spot. I always seem to miss a spot. Even when I double, ch double or triple check, I miss spots. And then we've got this part here, which we'll just put a coat of paint. I'll probably come back and put a second coat on. But this way our handle is attached to our shovel, and you'll notice it kind of, it clamp down, that way the handle's held on nicely, and our bottom edge looks okay. So I am going to actually set this in my clamp so that it doesn't stick to my tray. I am going to let this paint dry, and when this gets dry, I'll come back and we can add some, um, it's not going to stay up, let's try this, there we go, and we can add some Mod Podge to it, so I'll be right back. All right, my paint has dried, so we're going to paint, we're going to Mod Podge this in two steps. We're going to do the shovel part, and then we'll do the handle part. So I've just got satin Mod Podge, be a good, a good finish for this. I've got a nice brush, and I've put some Mod Podge out just in case there's any paint that isn't all the way cured. So I am going to, and I'll do this part on camera, and then I think I'll just go ahead and do the handle off camera once this is dry. Give it a, a nice even coat. Remember, don't go too thick with your Mod Podge because Mod Podge has a nasty habit of staying tacky if it's too thick. I very seldom have problems with Mod Podge being tacky if I work it out to a fairly thin layer, but if I leave globs and make a really thick coat, a lot of times I'll end up with a sticky finish that I have to put another coat on. 
And that's the cure for that. Just put another coat of finish on it. So I'm going to finish doing the blue and then I'm going to use my clamps again to hold it up so it doesn't stick to my tray. I'll cover up the Mod Podge I have out and I'll wrap my brush up so I can use it to do the handle. I'll Mod Podge the handle and when both parts are dry I will come back and we will look at this on the front porch of the dollhouse. So I'll see you then. All right, I've moved the snow shovel over onto the front porch of the dollhouse. My Mod Podge is not quite dry all over, but I need to get this video edited so that you guys can see it on time tomorrow morning. And I'm running out of day. Um, I hope you've enjoyed today's project. I love how this turned out. I love the detail of the ridges on the on the bottom of the shovel. I think it turned out so fun. Um, be sure and paint yours a fun color and let me know what color you're going to paint your snow shovel. Uh, be sure and hop over to the blog post to get the free pattern. Um, the link is over there. If you enjoyed today's video, be sure and hit the like button. Leave me a comment. Not only what color are you going to make your snow shovel, what other things would you like to see in future videos? If you enjoy my content and haven't subscribed, be sure and hit that subscription button and the notification bell so you know when I put up a new video. Thank you very much for watching today, and I will talk to you next time. Bye!